to walk distance if you know babadogo mm. to citizen mm. i remember those days thicker road was under construction they've been paid mm. to go and uh, face charges on behalf of others then uh, whoever paid them ran away when they're now facing uh, tough situations in court mm. this is a case of uh, a woman who was gang raped mm. And then uh, she would be threatened now and again mm. by the perpetrator. And a uh, uh, senior police somewhere was behind the protection of the suspect. Mm. It was a painful story where even after that trip, the woman would still be taken to somewhere, Karura Forest. Mm. And well, that's right. Uh, welcome to the show yet again. Uh, this is the story of uh, Steve Juma, the man who exclusively worked for the Nation Media Group as a crimes and investigations reporter, later on to become the director of communications for one of the counties in this country. And it's my pleasure to host him today. Steve Karibu. Asante, son. Welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you. Before I can ask you where it all began, do you think journalism has become something that everyone can just do from comedians to you come up with something you're a journalist you know well um i agree with you mm. that uh possibly it may be seen that uh, everyone can now practice journalism mm. uh, because the internet has provided people uh, with platform to air their grievances, to report on what they feel like they can say. It's a free for all. Mm. So, in other way, I disagree that it can uh, uh, make journalism also to be seen like something of the past mm. or to give uh, everyone who purports to be reporting would be, would be uh, credible enough mm. to share their stories. There's a wide difference between what we see in social media where people post stories and uh, and then publish them for uh, public to see or to read. Mm. Um, I believe credibility mm. and the most verified information comes from our traditional media. Mm. Yes, yeah, so it's not so uh, easy for us to believe in everything that is published by any Tom Dick and Harry mm. because they do the superficial part of reporting mm. but is the journalist uh, through their profession um, by understanding the ethics codes mm. they can give the public verifiable mm. information so mm. to me I see what they do uh, is a challenging thing also because uh, some of them they are credible I do not want to dispute that uh, what is published sometimes is not the way we do but you see we work with certain dictates that uh, we are guarded, we look into many interests before you publish a story because we look at the effect of uh, what we are yet to uh, or about to publish. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, when you go to internet and how people do things on social media, uh, they care less. Yes, because we don't share graphic pictures mm -hmm. in the mainstream media. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you go to social media, people don't understand the mm -hmm. impact of... Uh, are sharing those explicit or graphic images. Mm. Yes. I thought I would begin at that part because uh, someone was on, was on this show and as we were taking a stroll, he mentioned it and I thought, let me begin with that as a question for this. So for you are Steve Juma, and like I had said, because this is a show that celebrates the legacy of journalists, where did your journey in journalism begin? Where did your journey in journalism begin? People want to know a little bit more of your personal life in terms of who really is this Steve Juma? Ha, Steve is the arrow of truth. I developed um, this ambition to become a journalist uh, when I was very young. Mm -hmm. I, was, uh, I was still in school. I really didn't know what I wanted in life. Mm -hmm. Uh, one would say that uh, I would say I want to become a doctor. You know all these stories. I want to be a doctor. I want yes. to be a pilot, engineer, engineer. But mm. now 
you didn't even know the the disciplines that are within the engineering or mm. uh, journalism mm. now i want to say that uh, i joined media back in 2011 2012 mm. i started my internship at citizen mm. that's why i took my internship mm. uh, it was three months then um I'd, I, I was done with the, with the internship I was to go back to school at that particular time. Mm. But then uh, I didn't have money again to go back to school at oh, that really? particular time. Yes. Uh, so what happened? I, I asked for more time at to be allowed. Yes. Mm. An extension of internship. Mm. Mm. So I would walk distance, if you know Babadogo, mm. to citizen. Mm. I remember those days, Thika Road was under construction. So I would walk, trek each and every morning to Citizen. Then um, I developed a niche in uh, reporting on matters justice because I really don't like to see an injustice anywhere. Mm. So I went to court. Uh, that, is what, well, that was my beat, that's my area. And I was under Janet Chapia. Janet Mmoja. Janet Mmoja. Mm. So Jan Janet was court reporter yeah, yeah. for Citizen those days. Mm. So I worked... So this time, this time, yes. Citizen has extended your stay. Yes. With difficulties, I'm an Isawa Kijana. It's Kijana Ka within. Mm. For how long now? For another three months. Okay. So that was a total of six months. Mm. So when I joined um, uh, courts, mm. I tried now to understand what happened within courts because... I couldn't fit well in sports. It's not my thing. Even today, if you ask me, team, do you support? Mm. If it's not Gormai, I don't know any other team. You know, I'm actually surprised so many of our colleagues have been sports reporters. Yes. Seth Olale. Seth Olale was one of them. Edmond Nyabona. Uh, yes. Muhammad Ali. He was one. <laughs> Waihiga. Waihiga Maura. I was a sports reporter too. So you couldn't fit in that? Yes. So um, I was given that opportunity to be in courts and learn what happened in the court corridors, reporting on different matters. Then, then that is where my passion now for, for investigative uh, reporting began. Mm. Because I would see suspects mm. brought in court. At those days, you know, uh, like today, if you ask anyone, we were before the judge, you know, I, I, I used to think that people, uh, bro I, didn't, I didn't understand the justice system. Mm. I thought one would be arrested today, mm. uh, charged today, mm. then taken to court. Mm. We didn't know maybe the role of a magistrate. Mm. We don't know. The, I hear people saying, Alipeleko kwa judge. Yeah. It's never judge in some of these matters. It's not for magistrate. Yeah. And there's that process of hearing. There's that process of now sentencing. Mm. And then... Zingino does the a DR. Exactly. Yeah. So... Uh, during my time in court, I would interact with the, the suspects. Either those are still in uh, 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 prison or those in inmates or whatever. I would also meet these people who have been uh, maybe released on cash bill mm. and then they attend the mentioning and the hearing of their cases. Mm. So something uh, really made me now to start thinking of how I can do stories different within courts. So I interacted with the, a prisoner uh, then during the hearing and I asked, uh, bro, nini ilifanya uka kuja huku? Those people really want to share stories, but they are limited sometimes. Mm. Mm. So this guy told me something that really changed um, uh, my, 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 my thoughts in how uh, reporting should be done. This guy told me, uh, Steve, uh, you know, I'm in committee. And um, the case I'm facing here is a serious offense, a yeah. uh, case of murder. Uh, and uh, we are not really people who did these things. Mm. Uh, we know who did it, but we can't say, because probably the powerful people out there can finish us. Some of us who were brought here, we didn't know even the charges that we are facing until we met murder charges here. Mm. You know? And that's very common. Yes. Mm. And some are even paid. Mm. 
to go and uh, face charges on behalf of others. Then uh, whoever paid them ran away when they're now facing uh, tough situations in court. Mm. So they told me so many inside stories, apart from police said, prosecution said, you know, and that's what, where I developed passion on reporting on uh, this other side of the story. Mm. And that now what became mm. the investigative pieces. Mm. Mm. Because I could have some inside stories. Because these people will give you, they have nothing to lose first. They are, they really want justice now. Mm. You see, there are people who go to court then uh, for, because they have been paid, like I'm telling you. So at this time around, they are very honest and sincere with what they want to share with you. That is where I developed that interest and then mm. began now digging deep mm. from what is in their file. Mm. And the mm. rest is history. Under Janet Chapia first. Under Janet Chapia. At this time around, uh, I was, uh, you know, internship, sometimes you're not allowed to, 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 to voice your to stories. Voice stories. Your stories. Yes, Sauti yako ni mbae. Sauti bado lazime ipigwe msasa. So, um, why is that a very big deal, by the way? I think it's, it's uh, to me, uh, it's okay. It's a learning process. Mm. That you need to, your voice need to be mm. a bit authoritative and mm. then uh, it should not be like you are you're just telling a story. You should be having a compelling mm. uh, voice when you pass your story. Mm. So it was a learning process. Mm. So once I was done with my, my, my internship, mm. a month later, there was this guy called Charles Ochieng. Mm. And then QTV, I think they had started QTV. Mm. Then uh, Charles Uchen calls me, Steve, where you unajua mambo ya makoti ni uku? Why don't you talk to Betty Dindi? Mm. I'm a, just come. Who is Charles Ocheng now? Charles Ocheng was a reporter for QTV Sports. Yes. So I'd known Charles Ocheng. Then I told Charles, now what do I do? Uh, you come make your application. We are starting, we've started a new television here. Why don't you come and uh, talk to us? Mm. Then we see how we can be assisted. I went and uh, met Betty Dindi. Mm. She, she was the QTV manager or something editor. It's been long now. Mm. So I was put on a correspondence list mm. that I will be submitting stories from court. court. Mm. Now you see, I now, I've started now to voice my story. At QTV? At QTV. Or at Citizen? At QTV. Mm. At QTV. So at Citizen? At Citizen, I only voice like I don't, three stories. Yeah. Uh, th those are... Zikaenda Sasaba. Sasaba. Uwezi fanya za jioni na wenyewe kuna magizi. And then, um, there were good people at Citizen. Yeah. I remember, um, it's called Osen somebody. Even Osen, Osen now, the, 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 the state house... Uh, uh, spokesperson mm. was there. There were good people who really supported, like the people like uh, uh, Mwakazi, mm. Johnson Mwakazi, mm. Willis Raburu, mm. Sali Mbilu, mm. Sa 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 yeah. Sali was there, yeah. Mohammed, Muslim Mahmoud, somebody was there. Mm. There were good people working at Chapia, working at Francis Gashure, mm. everyone there working at the late Peter Pondo, mm. and working at Kimeli, mm. very good people. So, uh, when I now at, at QTV doing the court stories mm. and then with a bit of investigative, mm. something came to my mind. Why don't I start a segment? Mm. Nani really liked my idea, Lena Sky Kai, mm. because I would now submit stories for both NTV mm. and QTV. Mm. How was that process? Uh, it was interesting process because you see... Um, I'm saying how was the process of trying to switch from... QTV. Because the, those were two um, TV stations under the same mother company. But some way, somehow, they were also competing amongst themselves with, with each of them having its own reporters. I don't think really if they were competing among themselves. Mm. I wouldn't want to comment on that because it was one station mm. and uh, stories published uh, at QTV mm. were published at NTV. Mm. So it was sort of, this is a Swahili TV. Yeah. And the other one has both, both. Uh, uh, mm. English and, uh, and, 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 um, and Swahili coverage. Mm. Now, that is when I started. 
I was uh, given dates mm. to start doing my pilot mm. and stories. Mm. So I did one story. Mm. This is a case of a, a woman who was gang raped. Mm. And then uh, she would be threatened now and again mm. by the perpetrator. And uh, a senior police somewhere was behind the protection of the suspect. Mm. It was a painful story where even after that trip, the woman would still be taken to somewhere, Karura Forest. Mm. The same action happens. Mm. It was such a... It's, you can't imagine that story that it happens. Mm. So the matter was reported that uh, it's called Ombudsman. CAG mm, Commission mm, of Administrative mm. Justice. Yes. At the time, I think it was Otienda. Otienda Molo was uh, the chair yes. of the Ombudsman. Mm. So we got these complaints. And then the poli complaints were against the police, were against the judiciary, were they not fast tracking their cases. Uh, some senior police officers were summoned. So when I did this story, and that was my first voicing. At NTV. At NTV. Mm -hmm. So one day I told Linus that I'm now through with my story. Mm -hmm. Maybe to have a look on what I have. Mm -hmm. I don't need took Linus uh, two months. Mm -hmm. I was pursuing this story. I will get time. Mm -hmm. I will get time. Mm -hmm. I will move there with my flash disk. Yeah. See my story, Bana. Mm -hmm. I will take time. Mm. I will let, let me mm. find some time. Then uh, I will get back mm. to you. I will get back tomorrow to you. at ten. Tomorrow at ten. Mm. Can we do? Yes. Next yes, Tuesday yes, at next two. Next Tuesday at two. Uh, mm. You know, he's a busy <laughs> man also. So I was patient. Mm. So one evening, I left news. Mm. Uh, still waiting for, for feedback. And got home. Mm. Then. Uh, Moriah Karaoke calls me. Mm. I knew maybe I would be asked why did I leave news room early? Mm. Well, there's another assignment. Yeah. I would see if this not if I'm done with my stories, I would just for your car mm. at around uh, five ish there. Mm. So at least now you're not walking. Uh, yes, yes. Mm. Of course I was walking. No, 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 okay. This was <laughs> I had something, my friend. I was <laughs> correspondent. Uh. <laughs> so I would go to my place. So then Nani calls me in the evening, uh, Moriah. When I already arrived home, and, uh, Steve, where are you? I have it, uh, I am home. Who told you to, to go home? To leave. Hmm. Do you know LK is looking for you? Hmm. And I didn't share anything with the, the editors down here that I've always I've, I've been in conversation with Linus. Hmm. So I returned back to work. From home? From home. Sakumina Moja. Sakumina Moja. Sakumina Mbili, it is a quick case. Sakumina Moja. Then uh, I went direct to Lena's office. I found that he was all there. So I reached him on phone. The boss, you were looking for me. I was away. I had gone home. So, but I'm back. Ah, don't worry. Let's meet tomorrow mm. in the morning. Mm. So I Go home. To me, I knew that there's something. Mm. Maybe Eza has seen my footage and or my story. Maybe it's a very horrible story, mm. or uh, he's welcomed the the the, 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 the idea. Mm. So the next day morning, I went to the office. Then uh, it passed. I used to sit with Larry Mado, mm. uh, Dennis Okari, who was somewhere. So he passed and then Juma came see me. Then we went to the office. Steve Juma, this is a very good story. Mm. Can we do more of these stories? Mm. Can you, this is a good story and that's to run. Then he calls Juma, Emmanuel. Mm. Head of news. Yes. Mm. Yes, head of news. So to me, this one was my prayers. God is here now, here with me, walking with me. The favors are now here. Uh, then the next thing was to do the promo um, for my stories. Starting this Wednesday. Yes. Uh, yes. 
Was it now was it now already a segment or it was just the story? It was now a segment. Officially. Because I'd done like four stories, mm. but I only shared this one because mm. this was more urgent. Mm. That most of investigator invest, investigative stories, they are not like um, really, really, really now. They are mm. not like you want to deliver them now yeah. because they are stories that you've established the past. You've done so many mm. things. Mm. They are not. But this one was more urgent at this particular time mm. because there, there are so many correspondents from the police from the unit. So it was an active. Uh, case mm. just like any other normal um, developing story mm. so that is when uh, I was granted opportunity now to start airing my stories mm. every Wednesday on uh, or at NTV at the same time mm. I that newspaper pull out mm. full page Steve Juma Dania uh, a Hapo Nation newspaper mm. I was telling you that these episodes, these stories are coming, uh, will be coming on every student by Steve Juma. Mm. That is how mm. things started. Would you consider that as your breakthrough or what really do you term as your breakthrough into media? Really? Absolutely. That is when everything started. Because mm. now I would get more calls, people telling you different stories, very compelling stories for investigative and then uh, I got the network of all police mm. stations mm. in this country, those mm. uh, from the OCPDs, and you know, we have them. Mm. So, and I could get stories both from the police mm. telling you about an injustice somewhere, mm. members of the public. And then uh, I was in front of so many mm. hidden stories in this country from the security, from mm. name it all. Mm. I had all those contacts that could give me mm. stories and shared stories. In fact, if you go to Nation Town, a receptionist will tell you, mm. I had something like an OB. <laughs> Where you come, record your case, just tell me, give me your number, mm. you write your number there, mm. share your details. Mm. If you have an OB reported mm. anywhere, just list there mm. so that when we start following up on your matter mm. we have your details mm. because you see how people sometimes can be they come to you tell you steve i've been um, harassed i've been beaten i've been but if you have, have you reported all these things you have not no but media does not offer prosecu prosecutorial power mm. you cannot come to the media to come and prosecute your case to the media mm. you cannot do that mm. we only highlight and tell the stories mm. from both sides Yes. So I think at that time, well, your biggest problem with the Saudi Ahaki was um, that the overwhelming number of cases. There because I, I can try to too imagine... Too much stories. I could, uh, I could not even handle the number of phones even in a day. Mm. Because it's then that, that some of these stories are more of... Um, they have humanitarian faces because someone kid was killed, abducted, mm. something happened, somebody mm. was killed somewhere, someone has gone missing, and already someone has shared with you the body. Mm. And I will tell you that uh, there's a story we did, I mm. think it was, I can't remember the year mm. very well, but there was a missing conductor, mm. uh, Super Metro, mm. very specific, mm. and it happened somewhere in Kikuyu. So the wife of, uh, of, of this missing person came to nation there mm. and they wanted to see me and to tell me now you see my husband probably uh, something has happened could you help us highlight this story the missing person so i reached out to the authorities mm. i really later later they shared with me someone shared with me the photo mm. of this person dead somewhere in Naivasha. Mm. so you see the the, the, the wife here with a kid, mm. you already have the information that the person you're looking for is dead. Is dead somewhere. Somewhere. I cannot break that news mm. to you, mm. but I have that information. You see, now this thing now it trickles down not just to my mm. job mm. because it's like like in some of the forums that we've had together, you've heard me saying it's very difficult to delink. Your personal life. My personal life mm. and the work you do, especially when you do these investigative pieces. Mm. You deal with people. 
beyond 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 professionalism and ethics these people still believe that you are the only solution mm. they need at this particular time i received a phone call today from a woman mm -hmm. who claims she's being trailed by the DCI in Mtwapa. Mm -hmm. And uh, the police down there and the local politicians have connived to steal the beach plots of the former Moisaka land. That is very rampant. It, 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 those are the kind of call, distress calls you get. Mm. Uh, these people call you at night. Someone cr is crying over your ear that you see what? Mm. I am being abducted. Mm. I'm being arrested mm. uh, for for some frivolous reasons that you cannot even justify. Mm. Uh, help me. Mm. Remember those days you were doing the stories of extrajudicial killings? So many of them. Yeah, during the Al-Shabaab thing, mm. uh, you know, where mm. people were being arrested mm. and some bodies found, you know. You all know the story of the extrajudicial mm. killings. So, and in journalism, we are... We are left to say by hooded men. Yes, 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 yes. Hooded Suspected men. Suspected to be sus police. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So, uh, when you when this story comes to you, mm -hmm. uh, it has other 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 elements that also affect your own life. Mm -hmm. Yes, because if you everything you pick, every mm -hmm. call you pick is just a distress. Yes. Yeah. So, those are the, some of the challenges that I faced uh, when, when you are dealing with some of these stories. And uh, mm. I also say it was a plat good platform for me to also get to know more mm. that plays in, in, the, in the hidden world. There are so, so much mm. that you would get from the police. I would even speak on behalf of the police who are frustrated. You get someone being transferred. Mm. Uh, for some reasons that they are doing a good job, mm. including one of the most senior security today mm. was frustrated and we did their stories mm. how they get frustrated from their bosses. Mm. When they get promoted, I don't know what happens to them. Y yes, yes, that mm. is it. Mm. So uh, it was a lot. It was a lot of uh, getting calls and also learning from, I mean, it's just a mixer of, of, of overwhelming mm. information. Mm. Yeah. And sometimes you cannot, you can do very little. Yes. Because the, the, the only thing you can do is to report. Yeah. What else would you do? And sometimes you look at the case and you think according to you, because it hasn't been presented to you in a compelling way, so you also don't find it as compelling exactly. to put on air. Exactly. So there will be so many of those stories that you didn't do. Yes. Because you didn't see the, the trail of the problem. Because again, the case in the Nyingi, case in the Nyingi, Sam. Wow, we could have known that someone from Tanzania was reporting. But you haven't told me that your missing child was a friend to a police officer. Exactly. The police officer came and picked him from the house. Exactly. You are just saying your your child went missing. You know, like yeah, some of the stories. Um, and what what I realize that, uh, and this is very true, mm. that uh, there are privileges uh, certain people have. Mm. especially when you are a journalist. Mm. You see, you have that confidence to go to the police station. Yes. You have that confidence to face a government uh, authority and mm. ask those hard questions mm. or to try to understand some truth. Mm. But uh, a common wanjiku or a common wanainchi, mm. the relationship you think mm. police have with them is not, not the same. It's not the same. Mm. There are people, even today, uh, for example, the, the traffic mm. offense, mm. that you know too well this is a minor offense and you can just uh, deal with it, then go home. Mm. People don't even want to associate with police mm. in anything. I was, at, I was locked up some day at Kabete police station. Mm. And there was this young man, Alikwana, he was a border border rider. And he was there yelling and saying, Nimuambia wakitaka wani uwe. And he's not telling us the context. Then he says, I'd seen a helmet. When the helmet in Endesha Piki Piki, <laughs> seen a helmet, Aje. So the boy says, I'd seen a helmet in Endesha Piki Piki. Then I've given them a thousand, Bob. When this guy entered my pocket, I'm on a 20,000. I'd want to take a look at what I'm doing. I'm going to take a look at what I'm doing. I'm going to take a look at what I'm doing. 
You know, that one now, so, that one talks to the, I think, people, the frustration people, you're talking people about. People go al- uh, through, um, they, are, they are mistreated with the, those in power, be it politician, be it police, be it who, any person in the authority. Mm. Uh, the common monarchy have no voice. And that is what they believe that the only reso- um, place now to, whoever can speak to them could be journalists. Mm. would speak on their behalf. And it comes at a cost. And it comes at a cost. So the cost of telling all these stories, I know because I've been abducted before by police (laughs) for (laughs) the work we do out here, the cost of telling this story. So how safe were you by calling out police officers and other perpetrators for the crimes they were committing against the local man? First, I would want to say that uh, not every police officer is a rogue. That's true. Police officer. We have good people, Mm. very good people Mm. in our society. Mm. And I would say a good number are good people. Mm. Now, these investigative pieces, Mm. It's not a walk in mm. the park. Mm. Yeah, because it's easy to, to watch news mm. once it's been published. Mm. Or maybe editor has gone through. Mm. Mm. But the reporter yes. goes through a lot. Mm. I encounter a number of threats. Mm. And I would share my threats with one person also. Mm. Because I realized if you start reporting issues of uh, threats, then you become nuisance to police station. Mm. Yeah, because uh, people will tell you anything. You will see certain things on the road, and then uh, you also want to maybe go to the police station reporting. I saw a Subaru. Mm. Nini. Because how many Subarus will you report? Yes. How many threats will you report to a police station? Mm. So um, there's a way we operate. One, uh, as a journalist, when you do investigative pieces, Mm -hmm. you really need to know who you are dealing with. You really need to know how you safeguard your stories before they are published. Mm -hmm. You also need to, it doesn't require a careless person. You need to be... um, you really need to protect so many uh, things around your coverage. Mm. And you also need to know where you file, I mean, uh, store your materials mm. before they are published. Mm. Um, I've gone through a lot during my time. Mm. And you still just walk in the newsroom and put a brave face and think, make people feel that you're just okay. Mm, mm, yeah. Mm. I did a story uh, about some gang, some goons, some thugs, some criminals mm. who were killing people mercilessly mm. around Dandora and Kibra. They had their circles. I didn't know that thugs had circles those days. Mm. I don't know whether they still exist. And uh, they told me, do not share. We will tell you what we do, how we do all these things. And Mm. please don't leak Mm. this information. So where are we supposed to take it? And then, uh, no, no, no. Of course, uh, distort the the voice and do all that. But they Mm. they are able to. Okay, I mean, not leaking who they are. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, okay. Now now, now I think I I understand. And uh, Vincent Achuka. Mm. We went with Vincent Achuka to do these stories. <laughs> yes. And I met these thugs. They were armed. Remember doing a story with an armed person. Mm. And you were taken to some thicket, some bush in uh, Gong forest. Mm. Uh, I was with uh, Dennis Okari. Mm. 
Then we were told where they train on how to shoot. There were some chilling stories. They, 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 they were disturbing stories. Mm. How they shoot, where they throw bodies sometimes. Those stories, some of them were like, ah, ini mm. to move up. Mm. Stories are jabba. Stories are jabba. Mm. But in real sense, they were telling the truth. Mm. That story is still in the, we have it on YouTube, mm. uh, Syria, wa live for something. Mm. Yeah? Gangsters. Gangsters. Uh, Para- Paradise. Uh, yes. Mm. We did that story. Mm. That is a story that uh, I will live to remember. Mm. Because now, police also want you to help them. Mm. But then in journalism, we say it, it's it, not our it, job. It's not our job to, mm. to, to, to tell the police what they're supposed to do. Yeah. They're supposed to or where criminals are. Yes, that's not my job. Mm. It's their job. Mm. So they, sh- they were like, Please, you know, it's not a just please. Mm. It's a, it, it is not that soft. Mm. I had to disappear mm. for some time. Mm. Seku Owino knows this. Mm. <laughs> Seku, good yeah. man, that good one. man. Yeah. So only if he reduces how yes, fast he walks. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> then um, when you uh, another interesting bit when you do these stories, you also need to get a, a very bold uh, editor mm, mm. or proper backup from from your company mm. because you see these um, criminals they have a way of fighting back. Yes, just like corruption. Just like corruption. Mm. So when you do these stories. These days, I would I would recommend that doing promos before you highlight your story. I know it has advantage of maybe for for purpose of uh, getting audience to see or to watch mm. your publication. But mm. when you do promos, those days, yeah, do the promo and then disappear mm. because you're already informing you that this is coming. I will not tell you much what I went through mm. uh, because some of these things just let them go. Mm. And um, I am the first person to break the who broke the um, the NYS one. Yeah, yeah. You know, na ule address some of these another one. I th- the one for Ngiritas and there's one for for the Kafura. There's one for yes, yes. Kafura. The Kafura one was. Either, either one or the they one. They address our one, yes. They address and the ones in Giritas, I think. Yes, yes. Yes. So you see, you get this information mm. when no one else knows mm. this information. Mm. Then you share them. Mm. Where do you put your risk? At, you put yourself at risk because you're talking about millions or billions of shillings. Mm. And you are daring to, to t- tell these stories. That reminds me when uh, last year I broke the story of the edible oil scandal. Yes. And this town, there was nowhere to hide. Yes. Yeah. Let's yeah, proceed. Yeah. Then um, there's this story of uh, the late Chris Musando. Mm. I remember so well that it, I, I think it was on a Sunday. I mean, but I, I know it was on a weekend. Mm. I did a story uh, on Sunday that two bodies have been found somewhere in Kiambu, these sides of Kiambu. No one knew that this is the body of Musando. Or she, the lady was called Carolyn. You, did, you visited that story the other day, Carolyn Gumbo. Carolyn Gumbo, so a very sad story. That's a, such a name. Mm. And then um, I believe someone called me, and I still believe that was a wife. Mm. One Sunday afternoon mm. but uh, Juma how are you fine uh, there's this story someone is missing and uh, we'd want you to hear this story mm. then uh, he ended she mm. ended the call mm. so let I call that number again mm. what is this case we are talking about remember we are we are, we are approaching elections mm. in fact it, it lost on me that uh, Chris Musando was the then ICT mm. um, uh, IBC, ICT manager. manager. Mm. So when um, I called back, I said, Steve, wait, we are telling you. Just wait, just wait, just wait. On Monday, mm. 
it was ICT, uh, ABC ICT manager Chris mm. Musande mm. is missing. Mm. You remember we were taken somewhere to TRM. Yeah, where I think where uh, the, Moses Kuro had taken some picture. Yes, mm. and there was apartment there. I still remember that apartment when the police were doing their mm. normal business of, <laughs> of managing, <laughs> managing public tension. The scene and the aesthetics. <laughs> Uh, so, a few minutes later, I was called by a friend mm. that still, Ebu Kuja, at City, mm. City Mochari. Mm. Now, we arrived at City Mochari. When everybody was still focusing on what police were doing at TRM, uh, the other media houses were there. Mm, with the Range Rover. Yes. Mm. So when I went there, I have that courage of being bodies. Mm. Because that's part of life. Yeah, You've yeah. seen so many dead bodies mm. killed, thrown, where? Mm. The graphic, gory, El Shabab, mm. you what? Mm. The, the, the Westgate, the Sili, mm. the, 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 the Chiromo, Moe Girls, Infano, yeah, 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 all those. Fire. That was bad, by the this. way. So I went there, mm. and then... Uh, I saw the body. Mm. I could quickly connect. Mm. But again, there's this problem. You've seen the body. You can't just break the news that. Uh, mm. So I mm. call Emmanuel Juma. Mm. Uh, Edit Nkambia. Emmanuel, we want a body. In a cane musano. Again, it has lost on me. That I did a story on Sunday yeah. that two bodies were recovered somewhere yeah, in, in Kikuyu, this area of Kikuyu. Mm. So I called Juma and I told Juma, Juma, we are not coming with you, son. Mm. Then uh, the wife was there. At the city watcher? Yes. Mm. And I want to believe, they actually they viewed bodies and... They, she could not recognize. I think she, the, the family was distressed, something like that. She mm. could not recognize. So, Juma just told me, really? Mm. What? That is Juma for you. Yeah, that's for you. What? what? Yeah. <laughs> Are you saying that uh, hey. that is Musano? The ICT. I think Nani was on air. Um... Uh, this brother of us, Swahili anchor citizen, Rashid Abdal. Rashid Abdal. Yeah. Then the, those days, obese, obese. Mm. So Obi came to to Sit. citizen, uh, to, 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 to city mochari. City mochari. Mm. Then people were just gathering there. It's like somebody had already leaked this information also. Mm. But the family were yet to confirm. You see, yeah, you have yeah. to wait for the family to confirm. Yeah. Then the next thing we realized, uh, it was now confirmed that there's a body and uh, mm. it was chaotic at City Mochari. Mm. And you remember someone being chased, mm. there was some drama there. Mm. So those are some of the stories that you get yourself in front of mm. high profile cases as, as an individual. Mm. But there's nothing you can do with that information at a certain time. Mm. 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 Because you know, our justice system, if you become the first person maybe to, to say something, mm -hmm. uh, they will uh, come mm. for you and uh, please you, tell us. Yeah, you know more than we do. Yes, mm -hmm. that is why you see people these days uh, and Kenyans when they find an accident, somebody's been beaten or some very, very this um, sad uh, situation. No one wants to, to be part of it because the next thing you will be called in for, to go and record statement and tell us what you know more. Mm, well, you, you must know more than yes, we do. And Kenyans don't want those things. And I was once I, I was on someone there after I did the story of we broke the I broke the story of um, fictitious payments at the NHIF. I remember. And the next thing I hear is that someone wants me to tell them more. more. I mean it's their job. It's their job. Mm? So life of investigative uh, reporter. Mm. It has also its own, what I would call occupational hazards. Mm. Uh, there's a way you carry yourself in public. Mm. Um, 
you you need to be more careful mm -hmm. because you will be liked and hated in equal measure. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. because each story you do it hurts somebody. Yes, it exposes someone and it benefits, it benefits another. Another. And sometimes it's easy for someone to say that you have been compromised by the other party. Yes. It was a difficult way of life. Mm. Yeah, because you don't move freely the way you think. You have to do these funny, funny things of trying to camouflage as if you're like a million. Mm. You, you want to be private. Mm. But later on, you get used to people. And uh, if I believe when you do a good thing, uh, without being compromised or doing anything, mm. you don't have to fear mm. because uh, we also we are also believers, mm. yeah, and we believe that when you do right thing, those mm. good things will fall up with you. No one will mm. intend to harm you. Though you have to live a careful life, it requires a responsible. Is it life. really possible? Is it really possible? Because you know, you will always, and this has happened so many times. You know, in journalism, I. Um, both of us are talking from the same genre of journalism mm -hmm. and that is investigative journalism and I came to learn that uh, there will always be the accusation that you have been bribed. There will always be the accusation that you've been compromised and when someone can't do that, they will seek to discredit you as a person because once they discredit your name, then they have also discredited the work that you do. So is it really possible to even be careful? I mean, you guys came to have me released at Kasarani Police Station the other time. Is it really possible to be careful out here? I, I, I believe I will take you back to the term. You, you need to fear nothing sometimes. Mm. Especially because you've gone to this field of reporting knowing the dangers mm. that are there. Mm. And you need to remain uh, steadfast mm. and be bold, mm. speak truth to the power. Mm. They get scared because if they fight back, you know, all you need is facts. Yeah. Because you're not selling a propaganda. Mm. If you are dealing with the facts, mm. you cannot challenge facts. They are so disturbed. They're like figures. Mm. Yeah. So... I still believe that, uh, yes, there are those dangers that come. Every job has a challenge. Mm. And then uh, do not make the challenges to be bigger than mm. the assignment ahead mm. of you. Mm. Remember, journalism, investigative journalism, to me, it's a calling. Mm. But there are so many colleagues. It is a calling. So many colleagues don't want it. Yeah. No one want to venture into a situation. People will ask you, but now you are young, you have a family, mm. uh, you know, you get some cryptid messages. Mm. So I believe there is a crop of police officers mm. who will never change mm. or have refused to change. Mm. Or it's their way of or life. Or the way maybe they carry, sorry, curses. Mm. They walk with the curses with them. They don't want even to appreciate the, uh, the, the new constitution that gives people right mm. to question, rights to, to be heard, rights for, fear, for fair hearing. Mm. Because uh, there are places that where you go, police don't behave yeah. like the way they do in certain places. Mm. Because Nairobi, Nairobi for sure, people are a bit exposed. Yeah. There are certain things you cannot just do to, to Mwanaichi mm. and will be let scot-free. Yes. But in some places where police is the judge, mm. is a magistrate, is the prosecutor, is everything. So you are at the mercy of the police institution. Yes. Uh, I hate these stories where somebody tells you, Najua, wa mesema ni lete eh, pesa flani, ni yu ili atoke. So I ask, ii pesa hai, kuna receipti flani watu wanapewa wa police station, inakuanga taxed. In fact, it's, 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 it's not common that we may say that we may say that we may say But then I came to realize, Steve, huh? mm. there are so many bribes that are given inside the police station than outside the station. I mean, there's a lot of bribery inside yes. the police station yes. than outside. Yes. And it's more people or traffic cases. And then um, these are the minor, minor offenses mm. where people 
do, I, I, I believe you still need to, <laughs> to tell Kenyans about their rights. Mm -hmm. Then I wanted to t t tell you this mm -hmm. about some of the challenges that yeah. are faced as, also as a journalist. Yeah. Um, no one first trusts you. When you walk into a public place, you may be out with your family mm. or you are on your own somewhere. Mm. People just see you as a threat to what they are doing. <laughs> Tell me, if you walk to the police station today, mm. this people would want to hear, you no know, one even if you want to ask direction from a police officer at the police station, they really want to serve you quickly yes. and leave. You leave. Or no one wants to talk to you. Mm. Or when you go to the police station, I really hate that statement. You go to where people are, maybe, you know, these joints we go. You who are, is we? Who is we, Steve? Yes. Who is we when you say the, these joints we go? Ah, uh, no, what I mean, um, maybe you go for this, you go for, 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 for lunch somewhere, yes. or you're in a party function, something where there's a crowd of people, and then someone oh, knows you. Fear. Someone knows you as, as, as Steve Juma. Mm. The next thing that rings in your mind, mm. so it's like you become an enemy yeah. of the people. You are treated suspiciously. Simply because you are... Because, a... because of what the job you did or mm. Mm. what you do. Mm. There's a lot mm. uh, that plays in the life of an investigative reporter. And then... Um, once you are also done with these jobs, I don't think Kenyan media or even Media Council of Kenya mm. on that matter mm. have really done so well to look at uh, the welfare of crime and investigative reporters. Mm. Remember, this is a person who is a um, is, um, front... Uh, service provider or, mm. or, or front runner mm. when uh, there's accident, when there is uh, tragedies these we witness here and there, terror attacks, you see those images, real pictures. Then sometimes you've seen some journalists. Mm. Uh, there are sad stories that have been reported and you know, mm. no one is there to take care of you once you exit the scene. Mm. Because at the end of the day, you're a human being. What have you not seen in this? Yeah, sure thing. Those sad, sad pictures. Mm. They are printed here. That's why you see some of us are going mad. Mm -hmm. Some of us, no one is taking up. There's no that serious mental awareness mm. among the journalists. Sometimes you ask yourself, why did I have to do all this thing? Because mm. is that public and humanitarian uh, part of it mm. where everyone wants your help, yeah. you cannot provide. Mm. Sometimes you feel that you, you didn't deliver too well for them. Mm. And sometimes um, you are jobless. Mm. No one cares. And sometimes I try to, to, to look into investigative journalism, journalism and the life of a, a constable police officer mm. who has done too much, faced so many things, but they live a deplorable life at the end. Mm. These are the things that are increasing mental illness amongst, amongst journalists. journalists. I remember uh, the government was so harsh mm. on opposition. Mm. Sometimes back, I think that was towards 2017. Sometimes back then, Utiende uh, is also my close uh, uh, friend mm. um, came for interview at NTV. At NTV, mm. and. Uh, had been informed that there was a planned arrest. There, was a, time, there was a crackdown mm. on, uh, I think it was opposition. And that day, Nani was arrested. Was it Junette? Junette. Uh, 
Junet was it was Junet Moses Kuria mm -hmm. and Junet was arrested at Nation. Yes, just up, yeah. down, uh, down down there. Down there yeah. So in the morning, Ochinda Molo was in the morning brief with uh, Dibal. Dibal, <laughs> AM Live. Yes. So I informed them. I informed Otiende Bana. Uh, they are coming for you now. Mm. I had that knowledge. Mm. So Otiende's drivers driver was somewhere in front of nation mm. and i knew so well how these people were mm. and where they were they were monitoring once it's done mm. you have to pick yeah so having known that mm. i took my car to the basement yeah and then uh, i gave Otiende my job tag yeah yeah so we went mm. not jo 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 job tags uh, there's something i gave him to cover himself mm. so we went to the basement mm. and he got inside my vehicle and uh, i moved him out, out, uh, out. Mm. i escaped <laughs> so where is he seated at this time uh, at the back seat <laughs> <laughs> also they were monitoring his yes. vehicle and the driver yes mm. actually they were there they were waiting for him to just get done with the interviews mm. Then the next thing was to arrest him. Mm. Then Wakina Junet now, they mm. came with all this information. I don't know whether Tia didn't want to share this information. <laughs> was so mean with this information. <laughs> they came and they were arrested. Yeah. You remember the drama at, uh, at, Nation. at Nation? Yeah. So there is much that uh, I may not disclose today. Mm. Maybe it, it will be published in a book. Mm. Uh, the dynamics in the newsroom. Mm. Where sometimes you have a, a story. Mm. Someone somewhere just delete a story. Mm. Someone once infected a system. Yes, with a virus. You write a story. You have a fi you file your footage somewhere. The file is missing. Mm. Sometimes you do the story and you get a call elsewhere that mm. you are publishing a story. Yes. And you didn't share anything with anyone. With anyone. Until uh, I was advised now to do the story, and Juma would agree with me. Yeah. There's a day we were doing a story, and um, the story just went missing from the system. Uh, imagine you've scripted. You are waiting for the editor to go through your script. You are trying to to to, to, to check on the footage that you have. Then uh, one afternoon, you've arranged with the video editor. We want to edit our story. Then you go there, your file is missing. Your story is missing. The folder is missing. The, yes, the folder itself is missing. So I was advised now, use email. Mm. Do your stories on email. Mm. Share them by email. Because you see we have... Is it the script that is missing script? or the footage? Both. Mm. If it's not footage, it's the script. Do you think the, the, the media you joined way back in 2011, 2012 is the media we have today what has changed so so fast so many things have changed mm. uh i don't believe the media that i was so many years uh about 10 years back uh, mm. uh, is what we see today because you see the new social media pages that are given platform to mm. everyone now to broadcast and do their stories mm. it has changed a lot um those many days you would package a story mm. and report. Mm. Maybe let's say let's use an accident thing. Mm. You report about um, accident up in a particular place, two people been injured, one dead, something like that. Then you want to package that story for evening bulletin. Mm. There, were, there, were, there were no people, there, there was no social media where they would publish what happened. Mm. So you are reporting maybe in the evening that uh, two people died and maybe from the ground already someone else is reporting in the social media with pictures yes. that they are about there are six people or seven people have died. Mm. You are you are reporting outdated news already. Mm. Your news has become stale. Mm. So you see that competition and then the uh, social media thing what it does more is alarming mm. alarming stories but they are not credible. Mm. most of them mm. now you see the bloggers mm. look at what you people covered in shakaola and i still believe the story that we are told about shakaola is not what 
mm. needed to be told. Mm. All these bloggers, and I really respect their job, mm. uh, the, 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 the bloggers, the YouTubers, mm. today they have become journalists. So in nutshell, uh, uh, as I conclude, mm. uh, journalist, journalism has changed, mm. and I, I encourage people, uh, those who have been in the ropes of the media, who knows their job, mm. and I really salute uh, Alex Chamwada, mm with his daring abroad. Mm. Um, John Alan Namu yeah, with their man. pieces, yes. Mm. Um, many have come out and now you you are in here with the inside the newsroom. We never know or uh, how it will turn to be. Mm. But uh, we really need to now appreciate that um, these are changing times and uh, Things have really changed. Mm. The, 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 the internet has given platforms now for mm. us to do things differently. Mm. It's never as usual where you would go to, to, to cover a story. You have a cameraman. Mm. You have a driver. You have a, maybe a producer. Mm. You have a, a, a driver. Mm. Yeah, And they all will be the production team is with you. Mm. Today, you use a phone. Mm. And you are done. You don't need a camera person. You don't need, mm. unless you are doing um, sort of a production. That's when you require mm. camera. But you can do live reporting with phones. Mm. So you see, there are people who are being faced off. You don't need a driver anymore. Mm. People can also work from home. Mm. Yeah. You don't need to go to the office because mm. you can still produce your stories. These mm. days, once you are a journalist, you should have editing skills. Mm. You should do your voiceover. You, you are on producer. You are. We only need to see your your, your production on mm. on TV. Mm. How has the transition been? At what point did you decide now you want to move from the newsroom to do something else, to do communications, to join Tana River County? At what point did you then realize that you want to? Is it called jumping ship, or shifting <laughs> careers? Well, you know, I believe that. Uh, there's time to call something enough. Mm. And uh, I would really want to learn from different environment. Mm. I believe that I should not be at a particular place for more than five to ten years. Mm. I want to be versatile. Mm. Now I have knowledge on media and how it's work. Mm. Now I understand how government also work. Mm. Probably I should now venture into business. Yeah. City, so, city business city man. Business, no. <laughs> <laughs> city business city business man. But see oh, who's a fake gold. City uh, business. Yes, that's, so, a, that's a phrase being used by conmen in this town. Yes. Yes. City business man. Yes. How and where is it to? <laughs> where is it to? I really wanted to, to have that transition maybe to get to understand mm. how things are done differently elsewhere. Mm. And um, I don't regret mm. because um, I have learned a lot mm. and I'm still pursuing a lot. Mm. Yes, so that uh, I become a, <laughs> a good citizen mm. of this country. It's been uh, quite a number of minutes with you on this particular show. Asante Kwa Kufik and this show is powered by Betkumi.